Warning, this video may contain content that may not be suitable for children or anyone else that is easily offended. Strong language, graphic content, nudity, bad jokes, and a possible idiot, aka myself, may be featured in the following clip. Viewer discretion is advised. You're not responsible for any damages that you should receive watching this video. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's Zems, and welcome to Three Scary True Lockdown Horror Story. This video is by Mr. Nightmare, so if you guys haven't already, be sure you swoop down to that description box, call on that link, go watch the video, send the tire, you want me pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing. A lot of you guys during the live stream wanted me to react to this one, and I think the pool party one, but we'll get around to them. But if you guys haven't already, man, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, support your boy, man, I greatly appreciate it. We're right around the corner from 2000, man, so keep doing what you guys are doing, and the videos will keep coming here and there. Just because I'm going through a lot of stuff. You guys was the live stream. You guys know what's going on. And if you wasn't, <laughs> but for now, let's get it. Ah, ah, ah. Story one, anonymous. I work in a middle school as an eighth grade math teacher. Some of you may assume that means I'm like 38 or something, but I'm actually only 26. I was hired young. I'm not saying I'm immature or anything, just that if I was 10 or 20 years older, I may have handled things differently. This happened during a period that I was teaching a class. Math wing in our school is closest to the lobby. I remember it like it was yesterday. Down to the equation I was writing on the board when the lockdown alarm suddenly sounded. It wasn't a drill. All faculty and students are taught which alarms mean what, and this was the alarm that meant go into lockdown for real, not a drill. I hurried to the door to lock it. Each door in the building has a big glass panel in it though. So the doors have little blinds that you could pull down to cover this. As I turned off the lights in the classroom, I told the students to go hide in the corner of the room where we would be least visible and audible from the door. I mean, that makes sense. They just tell us that too. Everybody get into one corner and do all this. But my thing is, what if they got like a battering ram or something and they break open the door, you get what I'm saying? And y'all all piled up in that one quarter, uh, corner, man. It's gonna be open season. So the lights in the hallways dimmed to just the backup lights. Something I'd never seen before till that point. It's going down. I was slightly worried because I knew this had to be serious. And like I said, the math wing is right by the lobby. My classroom is one of the first classrooms you pass as you're going through one of the two hallways that veer from the lobby. Using the classroom phone, I called the front office. They didn't pick up after four rings, so I hung up. Them not picking up was concerning. There was suddenly a knocking on the door, a frantic, panicked knocking, accompanied with someone on the other side of the door begging to be let in. It wasn't a student, the voice was way too deep. It sounded to me like a guy in his early 20s. If I had to guess. I went to the door quietly and saw the person's shadow on the other side of the blind. He started saying he could see me through the blind and knew I could hear him. Don't. He kept saying let me in in a mm -mm. scared sounding kind of whimpery voice. Mm -mm. I looked to my students. Nope. Some of them had scared, confused looks on their faces. Mm -mm. I signaled for them to keep quiet. Then I asked through the door, who's there? What's your name? He said his name was Cody and that he was a student and needed to get into the classroom because he felt unsafe in the halls. Mm -mm. When he told me this, I noticed he seemed to be trying to talk in a slightly higher pitch. I wasn't falling for it. There was no way that voice belonged to a middle schooler. Facts. I ignored him and went back to the corner by the students. The guy on the other side of the door started knocking harder now, fiddling with the doorknob and then kind of thrashing at the door, all while still saying, help, let me in. I did my best to keep my students from screaming or freaking out. Can't say okay. I eventually gave up and the noises stopped. Bro, they didn't start giving teachers guns, bruh. Like, God, right, let leave the door unlocked. Forget the lockdown. Let them let them come on in. Let them let them find out what's today, what we're learning today in class, bruh. He's about to get chapter six through seven, bruh. He's about to get all that work in some click clank. Wow, bruh, hundred percent. Stayed in lockdown for half an hour before an announcement was made that police had searched the building and it was safe. Apparently some 20-something year old guy with long hair down to his shoulders was walking around the school with a small handgun. Whether it was a real gun or not remains unknown, but the guy was caught on camera leaving the building through a back exit. And he was found by police two hours later, not holding the gun. I think I could have handled the situation a little better. Mm -hmm. For example, not even answering the guy when he was mm -hmm. out the door. But I was so nervous that I really wasn't thinking logically. Tell him someone let me in. Better go find another hiding spot, big fella. Story two. This was back in my university days, not too long ago. I had to go to the bathroom, but I didn't like using the bathrooms that most other people use. There were a couple restrooms on campus that were never really used. For example, the activity center building's bathroom. Our school's activity center was usually a ghost town during early day hours. And it was next to the building where I'd be having my next class, so it wasn't like it was far away. Inside the lobby of the activity center, some guy was sitting on a desk looking down at his phone. He looked up at me as I passed and said good morning. 
I set it back and proceeded around the curved hallway to the restrooms. No red flags yet. While I was in one of the stalls, the door to the restroom opened and a man asked if anyone's in here. Being that it was the women's restroom, I was a little weirded out by that. Now it's red flag. I didn't answer. The door to the restroom closed, but I heard footsteps come up to my stall and stop. There was a light tap on the stall door with one of his fingers, I presume. Then, in that ever so tiny crack in the door, I saw the man pressing his face up through it. I saw his eye looking in for a second. I gasped and said someone's in here. He replied Herbert. back asking why I didn't answer him, then told me this building and all nearby buildings are going into lockdown because of an apparent student who was sighted with a weapon. I didn't understand why he was in the women's bathroom with me though. Yeah. I left the stall to be face to face with him, and it was that guy that was sitting on the desk before. I would ask myself, if we're on lockdown, why are you in the restroom? You know what I'm saying? Why didn't you go hide? Why are you in here following me? Unless you are the kid that's wandering the campus. Unless you're trying to help her out with a solid and tell her to leave before you do start shooting. But I don't know, red flags all around this place. I'm guessing he was the front desk worker or whatever for this building. He had to be trustworthy. He showed me a text on his phone from a random number. It was a warning from the university to stay inside whatever building and classrooms you're in and to lock all the doors due to a potentially armed individual on campus. I found that alarming, so I felt comfortable with him going to blockade the bathroom door with a garbage bin. After he did that though, the two of us just stood in the bathroom together, awkwardly. Like, I was trying to ask him for more details about the potentially armed person on campus. He said he had no other information on it though. Something about the way he was looking at me relentlessly, like no social cues or when to stop staring at me. Pulled out my phone to create a buffer, and as I was on my phone, I thought to just look for a similar text from the school that he showed me. But I didn't get any text from the university. I went to the school's website, which would often have news and alerts. It didn't have anything about it though. Mm -hmm. I asked this man's name, and he said his name was Eli that he worked in the building. Now that I thought about it though, his outfit consisted of light blue bootcut jeans with brown boots and a gray hoodie. He looked, if anything, like a maintenance worker. Instead of trying to continue the conversation with him, I was on my phone texting friends, any friends who I knew were on campus at the moment, asking if they heard anything about this armed person. And two friends text back saying no. Class was in session like normal. I looked up at the man, who was now even closer to me. Time stopped moving in that instant. Kick him in the balls. He looked at the door and whispered to me that he thought he heard something, and that we should make a move to one of the stalls and hide. I froze, both physically and mentally. He started to walk up to me, with his arms slightly extended out to nudge me into one of the stalls with him. At this point, the only thing I could do was scream, as loud as I could. I caught him off guard, and I think he went into full-on panic mode, because he looked around the room and then hurried to move the trash bin away from the door and storm out of the bathroom. I proceeded to leave the bathroom a few seconds after him, running to the nearest exit. From there, I called my mom to cry to her about it. She actually called campus police for me and then drove to the school to meet me. And that's when I told campus police about the man, with my mom there to support me. I received a call from campus police and they said they reviewed the footage caught in the building and could confirm that man did not work at the school and that they would do their best to find out who he was. I mean, you gotta ask yourself, like, where is everyone else at, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? There was no alarms, no announcements, or anything like that. There were no people yelling or screaming. You didn't hear about no like running by or anything like that. Like, come on, man. You're going to barricade themselves. Anyone in here? It's a lockdown. I'm like, no, bro. Nobody's going to do that, bro. Stop the cat, bro. Pay attention to when people are talking to you because nine times out of ten, you're going to be like, wait a minute. But by, by then, it's already too late. You're probably going to get hit over the head, or hit over the top of the head with something, or pretty much your cheeks are probably going to get clapped. But. Man, just pay attention. Have some kind of pepper spray, man. Knife something on you at all times. You never know you might need it. Some people are like, well, I don't condone violence. And if you don't condone it still, just have something on you to protect yourself or something, man. Because uh, times are getting rough. I never received any future updates. Sounds like the police. No updates. It was ninth period, the end of the school day, senior year of high school. Ninth period was one of my off periods, so my school days would be a little shorter. A couple of my friends also had their schedules set up that way. Ryan and Scott. <clears throat> Our third friend Tyler had off ninth period every other day. This was one of the days he didn't have off. That's a nice high school. Since it was Friday and a nice day out, we were all texting each other making plans to hit the beach. Tyler was talking about sneaking out of gym early to come with us. So we were waiting in the hallway by the gym. This hall was in the far corner of the school. The only people passing were students going to gym class. Tyler texted us that he was just going to wait till the gym teacher took attendance, then sneak back to the locker room and meet us in the hall. Hey, that's how you do it. We waited there for a decent minute. It was taking a while for some reason. There's a set of exit doors at the end of the gym hall we were standing in. 
It wasn't supposed to be used as an entrance. Yet here came some guy through the doors. This guy came through the two doors in the hall, wearing black sweatpants and a black zipper up hoodie with the hood over his head. He was also wearing a black backpack. We went silent as he walked past us, making a point of looking at all three of us with this dagger of a stare. All black everything, black hoodie, black bag, bro. It's time to go. If they say he had on black Air Forces, bro, get out of Dodge, bro. It's about to go down. Ain't he looking at you like that? It's time to go, man. He about to be shooting, and I'm not talking about basketball. Ryan stepped up and said, what, dude? Fuck off. And the guy stopped in his tracks. And don't don't have friends like this, bro. Sometimes it's best not to say nothing. Now he unstopped. He probably will wait for you to say something. Give him a reason to do what he's about to do. And turned to face Ryan and ask him if he's got a problem. Scott and I stepped in and just said forget it over and over until the guy turned and kept walking. There we go. We all agreed that guy seemed extremely sketchy. He looked like he could have been a student, but none of us recognized him. A few minutes later, we texted him asking him to hurry up. And he texted back he couldn't sneak out just yet since we're in lockdown. This was a shock to us because we weren't aware of this. He said the gym teachers announced it and everyone was hiding in the locker rooms. We also just realized the doors separating the gym hallway from the actual locker room hallway were closed and locked. We immediately linked it to that creepy looking dude dressed in all black who just walked past us. Mm -hmm. The reality hit us so much harder when there were these popping sounds from down one of the hallways. At first they sounded like maybe a teacher slamming books on a desk as if to wake a student up or something. But we quickly put two and two together and realized they were gunshots. The sounds of students screaming quickly followed. Next thing we knew, we saw that guy in the black appear down the hall, and he was running full speed towards us. The three of us ran out the two doors that the guy entered from, and all the way to the woods next to the school. In that moment, I felt the curtains of life slowly closing, and the thought of death becoming a reality. Man. I looked back twice as we ran, and saw that guy was chasing us, but he was kind of far away. He screamed stuff at us, most of it inaudible, but I did make out him saying, I'm gonna kill you faggots. We made it to the woods by hop of the fence that surrounds the perimeter of the school, and when we had a nice shield of trees covering us from view, we stopped to catch our breath. Shit. We decided to wait it out, laying flat on the ground to avoid detection. It's not enough breath in the world, bro. I would have been running through that whole thing, bro. Red, Red Dead Redemption status, and I would have been across the map like GTA 5, bro. I'm talking about lay down and not be spotted. Shit, I'm gone, bro. You saying boat with the, the, the strides. I feel like once you stop and take cover somewhere, you're just leaving yourself to be found and leaving yourself to be vulnerable and possibly leaving yourself to get killed by this dude, but that's just me. Maybe he's looking for the other dude. I'm like, hey, man, Austin. He's in the gym. That's the one that had a problem with you earlier. The one that said well, you got a problem. Yeah, he he's over in the gym. You just go down. So if you face this way, you go all the way down the hall. You see where that water fountain is right next to the vending machine. If you go and you make a right, you're going to get past this threshold. And then from there, you're going to make another left. And the gym should be all the way down at the end of the hallway. You can't miss it. There's also another entrance towards the back area. But you, you, you'll find it. You'll find it. Like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it is us. That's how it's gonna have to be. We then heard footsteps nearby. They got louder and louder. Here go. We could see him running through the woods looking for us. He ran further away from us, not noticing us. And when he was out of sight, we all agreed to run for it back to the senior parking lot. Between the running and the shock of the near-death experience we just had, I don't know how I didn't vomit. I got to my car and I drove all three of us to my house. Obviously, the beach idea was out the window now. It later blew up on social media in our high school class group chat that one of the new teachers was shot by the guy and was sent to the hospital in an ambulance. He survived, but everyone thought he was going to die considering he got shot twice. <clears throat> no one knows who that guy was or why he targeted that one specific teacher. I'm sure he went after us because Ryan antagonized him. He probably waited to come back for us, or Ryan specifically, uh -huh. because he didn't want to alert the whole school with a gunshot. Who knows though? Well, Dan, that was a good one. Obviously, the teacher was somebody that maybe he failed. It's like a movie like that on Netflix where the teacher gave this dude a failing grade and he did all his power and stuff to get back at her. Or the guy probably was having a sexual relation with his wife or that guy took his wife from him. Or it's a guy who probably owed him money. You never know. You know, a lot of these times, these teachers be living secret lives that you don't even know about. Some of these teachers probably got OnlyFans. Some of these teachers are probably drug addicts. Like, you don't know, man. They, they come to work just like everybody else, but they also got their own personal life. And that wouldn't be too far-fetched for them to do something like that man he has something with that teacher in order for him to only shoot that one teacher you get what i'm saying there has to be something personal on a personal level but 
I said Austin, but I meant Ryan. Don't don't have friends like Ryan. There's times where you have to be like, you know what, it's time to throw hands. There's other times you gotta be like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't say anything. Maybe I should just sit this one out and see where it goes. You get what I'm saying? But you guys enjoyed this video. It's called Three Scary True Lockdown Horror Stories Volume 4. It's by Mr. Nightmare. So if you guys haven't already, be sure you swoop down to the description box. Click on that link. Go watch the video. Send the entire you. I'll be pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing. Thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you guys for understanding that I'm really uh, busy this week. So I'm trying to post when I can. And, uh, and we just go from there. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Reprisal Zims, and welcome to the cruise. But again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Ah!